Overwatch just dropped a quick patch, fixing Lifeweaver and added some other stuff. So let's go ahead and talk about it. They reworked a lot of his abilities and made changes that actually make sense. The first change he did is with his dash ability. So it's going to work a lot similar to Hanzo's lunge. You don't have to physically hit an ability button anymore. You can just jump twice and get the same effect. Personally, I think this change is a pretty big one. This means a lot of people will be just dashing around like Hanzo, which means killing Lifeweaver will be just a little bit difficult. I know it's just 25 HP when you dash, but you'd be surprised how much people choke when they see just 25 HP left. However, if you're playing Life Weaver makes you a harder target to hit, so I guess it's a great change if you're playing Life Weaver. But if you're on the other end, it might suck. The other change they did is with this pedal platform. It has now been moved to the Ability 1 button. So if you're playing on PC, that's basically the Shift button by default, and now you can use the same button to cancel it once it's casted. This is such a great change. For me, it didn't make sense to be mapped towards the Interact button. It felt like you could have accidentally canceled your platform if you just used Symmetra's turn or something. But now since it's moved to the Ability 1 button, I think it's a better change overall. It feels more natural, and the Interact button can be just be left alone as the interact button. Also, I forgot to mention, there's now a little timer near the icon ability to show you how much time you got left before the platform goes away. This is a neat quality of life change. Thank you, Blizzard. I knew you guys were going to put it in the game anyways, so thank you for actually following through with that. You can now individually adjust the healing blossom and the life grip sensitivity, which is great for some tryhards out there. I don't really know what it does for the most part, but Karku was saying how he wanted both of these abilities to be separated and adjusted independently, and here's a change. So at least we got confirmation that the developers do listen to player feedback. Now, some of you might not like the new changes to Life Weaver, but don't worry. You can switch back to Life Weaver's original control scheme whenever you want. All you gotta do is just go to the option settings and change it to however you want. Also, here's a big change. They actually switched your primary and secondary fire. When you left click now on PC, you're gonna dish out some healing, and when you do the right click now, you can do damage. This change is very good, and it's also very convenient, because I hated manually switching from healing to damage all the time. With this slow-ass charge mechanic, it made me feel like I should just focus on either damaging or healing, because I'm pretty lazy and I didn't want to switch. But now with this change, you can damage and heal at a significantly faster rate. I personally wish they switched his primary and secondary fire to be more like that for Kiriko's button scheme, where left click would be damage and then right click would be heal. But this is no big deal though. I can just switch the buttons in the settings, so it's all good. They also did give him just a small nerf. Your primary and secondary fire, when they're not in use, will take 2.5 seconds to reload instead of the 1.5 seconds from before. So if you didn't know, your weapon can reload by itself without you physically pressing the reload button. Meaning, you can waste all your ammo on your gun, then go straight to healing for a little bit, and then when you try to switch back to your other gun, you'll notice that it automatically reloaded for you. This mechanic is kind of cool considering that you can just focus on healing for a little bit and then switch back to damage, and then you can kind of cycle this to make it look like you have unlimited ammo. However, with that 2.5 seconds that you have to wait before it automatically reloads, if you switch prematurely and you didn't reload enough, you might find yourself SOL because you didn't wait the full 2.5 seconds. Alright, next change is to the healing blossom ammo. It is now increased to 20 instead of the 12 from before, and when you hold the charge button, it doesn't slow you down anymore. It's only when you decide to hold that max charge that Life Weaver gets movement reduction. I didn't really think he needed an increase in his ammo. I felt like Life Weaver excels at being the enabler for your team. Like, he shouldn't be healing all the time. If you are, I feel like that's a very inefficient way of playing Life Weaver. You're better off dishing out damage and healing whenever it's necessary, and your value actually comes from you enabling your tanks or your DPS to get in there, try to get a couple of picks, and if they fail, you can just pull them out and have them try again later. And this increase in ammo doesn't really make sense for me, considering that whatever weapons you are currently not using get reload after 2.5 seconds anyway, so I feel like you rarely run into instances where you need to, if you can cycle between damage and cooldowns efficiently, you can make it look like you never run out of ammo. Alright, the next change is the Thorn Volley. They increase the projectile size and reduce the spread, so what I'm assuming for this is they made the projectiles smaller and tightened the spread a bit. When I try this in the game, it actually feels like you can actually hit headshots from a distance, and with a lot more ease. I do feel like his projectile speed is very slow, so in order to hit someone, you really have to compensate and just lead your shots a lot more further than most heroes. Nonetheless, this change is actually pretty big for Life Weaver. Not only can you farm your ult, I think you can reliably take out an enemy if the opportunity presents itself, since his weapon is now deadly accurate than before. The Tree of Life got its health increase, coming in at 1200, and now whenever the tree pulses, it will give you 75 HP per pulse that it sends out. This will make the tree a little bit more durable, so you can comfortably use it as temporary cover. Now my biggest problem with this patch is what they did with Life Weaver's parting gift. They removed his passive. Why would they do that? Well, it's because of the developers said that they weren't happy with how the players have responded to it. Most of the time, they just forget about it, and they want to reduce some of the complexity with the hero. I understand they want to declutter his kit, considering it was all over the place, but this passive was so cool. There's nothing like it in the game. People don't immediately die for it because they're not used to the mechanic just yet. It's only been two weeks, not everyone has access to the new hero, and you didn't give the player enough time to adapt to it yet. Plus, you only started allowing Life Weaver in cop matches. Everyone knows cop matches is where the sweaty nerds will take every little opportunity 
opportunity and take advantage of it. Even something as minute as a 75 HP that the enemy life reaver would drop. You'd be surprised how much that little amount of health will actually clutch in a competitive match. But sadly, we'll never know the implications because they took away one of the coolest part about life weaver's kit. Personally, I like the idea of the one last burst of healing you can get after your death. And the catch was, it could go to either team. I just thought the idea was just cool and unique and they just took it away from us. I do hope they bring it back at some point down the line, but I'm sure with the amount of influence I have on YouTube, they'll probably cave within a week or two. There are also other changes they did in the patch notes that I would say are pretty significant. They did adjust some people's ranks at the end of season three. For some of you that logged in on day one of season four, you might've noticed that you've ended higher or maybe lower than your last season. Unfortunately, they fixed this. So if you happen to log in right after this patch, if you were one of those people that were affected by this change, nothing's going to happen to you. But let's say you haven't logged into season four just yet. You're not going to get the extra benefit of getting the boost or the D rank from day one. Sorry, dude, you're just SOL. So I'm sorry for your loss. Ripperoni, no free division for you. They also fixed some players in bronze five that would see an incorrect percentage for their feedback. So I'm assuming this is when people would say you are at the minimum value for this rank. Chances are when you saw this, this is just a blatant lie. I would say just keep trying and maybe you'll find your way out of bronze soon enough. They also fix a number of edge cases where the matchmaker would be too uncertain about player ratings and thus move the ratings up and down faster than intended. So basically, the matchmaker is still pretty dumb when it comes to deciding which teammates to pair me up with or which enemies I should go up against. At this point, I'm just not sure what they're doing with matchmaking anymore because there's just no consistency at all. The only thing I expect from this game now is that if you win one game, your next game would most likely be more difficult than your last one. It's like running on a treadmill. Instead of gradually just getting your speed up to a moderate intensity, what the game would do is just crank the dial up until you're running as hard as you can, breaking a sweat, gasping for air, and then once you've had enough, they're gonna give you some breathing room, and once you think it's all over, they crank that intensity right back up, and this is how a lot of people probably get a lot of their losing streaks, and then repeat the process all over again. I will be honest though, I have not ran into a lot of losing streaks in a while. The most amount of losing streaks I've ever had was three to four, but even then, that's still a lot. So at least they are making progress on some things. As long as I don't go back to having my 10 plus losing streaks, I'll be okay. But rant over, we're gonna move to the next one. The map Esperancha is now fixed, meaning that you can't escape in certain areas anymore. Not really an issue for me since that one spot that I know of is on top of the health pack anyways. Like it really doesn't even impede the robot's path, so who cares, dude? If the certain fix they were talking about really was impeding the robot's path, okay then, good riddance. All right, that's all the notable changes I saw. The article is in the description if you guys wanna read it. Let me know your thoughts in the description down below. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. Till next time guys, I'll see you on the next one.